Have you ever wanted to learn how to code but weren't sure where to start? I've been there too. And today I can show you how to code. Hi, I'm Tara and I work at Code with Fossey. In this video, along with some of my Code with Fossey friends, we're gonna code our very own website using HTML and CSS. I'm excited to code, but what platform should I use? So the platform that we'll be using to code is called Replit. And we'll want to make an account so that we can store all of our code in one place. So I'm sharing my screen with you. Go ahead and open Replit on your own as well. You might want to open me this video on half your screen and open your own web browser on the other half of the screen. And so Replit is R-E-P-L dot I-T. And you should get a screen that looks like this. On the upper right hand side, you are going to click sign up right here. And there are a variety of ways you can sign up. So you can log in via Google, GitHub, or Facebook. Or if you don't want to use one of those single sign ons, you're more than welcome to just sign up on your own. And there you have it. Super easy to create a REPL account. Make sure that you remember your login and password because we'll be using this web page very often. I finished making my account. Can you show me how to use Replit? Yes, let's get started because I'm excited. So I have Replit open and you should follow along with me with your own Replit as well. We are going to click on this plus sign right here to create a new REPL. And here we're gonna click on HTML, CSS, and JS because those are the languages that we're coding in. And it'll automatically generate a pretty funny title. I'm just gonna call mine, my first website and click create REPL. And what you're gonna see is a lot of things going on and we can talk about it really quick. On the left, these are your files. In the center, this is your editor. So this is where we're gonna type the code. And here you're going to see what your website looks like. So let's go ahead and click run and maybe we can see something pretty cool. Ooh, so the website already has Hello World written in it. I really took it calling. What's the first thing we're gonna learn? The first thing we're gonna learn today is HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So if you can think of any website you've ever encountered, it definitely uses HTML in some way, shape, or form. So for the sake of this video, we are always going to code between these body tags. So here it says, hello world. Go ahead and try typing something in. So I'm going to write, hello, YouTube viewer. That's you. Click run. And look at that. I was able to write, hello, YouTube viewer on your own. Try to see if you can type in your name, your favorite color, or even your favorite animal. All right, so we were able to type something. Let's get a little bit more fancy. Um, in HTML, there is something called heading tags. So I'm gonna teach you how to code that. A heading tag, the syntax is this left caret followed by H for heading and one, a number, and you can write other numbers as well. And we're gonna close it with the other caret. Something you'll notice is in REPL, once you have an opening tag, it'll automatically type a closing tag for you. And you'll see that the difference is there's this backslash. So in between the H1 tags, we're gonna type in our heading. And headings are big ideas that you want to drive home. So today we're gonna make a website about Supergirl, who is my favorite superhero. So I'm gonna write about Supergirl. And then something I love doing is just clicking run whenever you're unsure or want to touch base or just want to see what you've made so far. So let's see what this looks like. Oh, cool. So we have a heading and it's a little bigger than our font. Amazing. Okay. There's other cool things that we can do with our font too. So we can make our text bold, italics, underline. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. So B is for bold. U is underline, and I like so. There you have it. Cool, huh? So something I'm noticing is all of the words are on the same line. And what if I wanted them in different lines? We can do something called starting a new paragraph. So we do that by typing P for paragraph. And you can see that it closed here. I'm going to move mine because I want it after the bold. 
I'm gonna press enter so I can organize my code better. And there. And one more time. Oops. Right here. So, all right, let's see it. Amazing. There, we were able to get them on different lines. Okay, so let's say I want to create a link so that my website links to another page. I'm gonna show you the syntax of that. I'm gonna start first by a new paragraph. Then the syntax for link is the left carrot, a href equals quotation marks. And in those quotation marks, we're gonna type in the URL that we want it to link to. A URL is kind of like a an address of, of another website. And then after you have the URL, you'll wanna type what is being linked, like what, what you want to say. So I might say, click here to learn more about Supergirl. And then I'll close my tag with the backslash A. So again, here in these quotation marks, you're gonna have to find the URL of where you wanna link out. You can find their URL by looking at the toolbar up here. I'm gonna link to the Wikipedia of Supergirl and I have that copied already. It looks like this. And then I'll click run. Nice. So here we see a link and it says, click here to learn more about Supergirl. I am going to click to learn more about Supergirl and there's the website. Very cool. Awesome. I'm gonna refresh the page so it gets back to where I was at. Can you show me how to add an image to my page? Yes, I can absolutely show you how to add an image to the website. So let's say I want to add an image of Supergirl. I will first start a new paragraph. So she is on another line. The syntax is IMG for image, SRC, short for source, equals quotation marks, and then I'll close it. So let's talk through what I just typed. IMG again stands for image, source is equals kind of means is here. So look here. So let me show you how to find the URL of an image. I'm gonna go to Google. I'll type in Supergirl comics, click images, and there's all these cool images. And um, let's say I like this one. I'll right click, select copy image address. And that's really important. Not copy image, but copy image address because you wanna find the address and then paste it here. Oh, yikes, it is pretty long, so you'll have to be careful. And, but we'll click run, and as you can see, my image was able to appear. What if I wanted to share the website with someone else? The first way to share your replit is to share the front-facing view. So what I mean by front-facing view is if you click on this kind of square with an arrow, this shows you just the website without the code. So someone would just be able to see your front facing website. And so you would share with them this URL. The second way to share a replit with someone is to directly invite them to be able to edit your code. You'll wanna click on this invite button followed by generate a join link and you would wanna share this link with them. The third way is if you wanna share with someone your code but you wouldn't want them to be able to edit your code. They may be able to see it and make your own copy but they wouldn't be able to directly edit. If you wanna use this method, then you're just gonna share this link with them right here. And those are all the ways that you can share a replica with someone. We just coded a page together, but I'd like you to try it on your own. Go ahead and play around with some of the syntax and tags that we just learned. You can click here or go to the description for a page on the Code with Classy website to learn about other HTML tags. The great thing about HTML is that there's so much that you can do and the best way to figure it out is just to code it yourself, try it, break things, fix it, and run it. I really like putting content on my page, but how do I give it some spice? Yes, so if you wanna add spice to your website, you wanna use CSS, which is the second language we'll learn about today. Before we get started, I wanna tell you a little bit more about the relationship between HTML, which we just learned, and CSS. So let's say if I'm picking an outfit for the day, I may decide first that I'm gonna wear a sweater and then a skirt. But from there, I'll have to think about what color do I want my sweater? Maybe what designer prints that I would want on my skirt. And this is similar to the relationship between HTML and CSS. 
HTML is like the bare bones, the skeleton of my body, while CSS gives me color and style. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it's the language that allows us to add styles to HTML documents to the web. And it is incredibly fun and powerful. The best way to learn is to just do it. So let's get started. I have my website open and we were coding in the index.html. Now we're gonna go to style.css to code in CSS. Let's say I wanna change the heading color. I'm going to type in H1, cause it's what I'm changing and it's called the selector. After that, the syntax is curly brackets, like so. And on the inside, you're gonna type what you're changing about it. So let's say I wanna change the color of the heading. I'll just type color, followed by a colon. Then I'm gonna type in what I wanna change it to. So let's say I wanna change the color to blue. I'll just type blue, followed by a semicolon. So before we click run, let me just overview what I just typed. H1 is our selector. That's what I want to change, followed by the syntax, these curly brackets. Then I'm gonna type in what property am I changing about it? I'm changing the color. And then what exactly am I changing it to? I'm changing the color to blue. Let's click run and see what we have. Amazing, we've got about Supergirl in blue. Next, let's say I wanna change the font that the heading appears in. I will type in the syntax for changing the font is font family, like so. And then let's say I wanna change it to Georgia. Again, I'll end it with a semicolon, click run, and it looks different. Nice. Okay, uh, we can also change the background of the page. And to do that, um, you'll wanna type in the selector body and with curly brackets. A quick blast from the past. Again, body is where we typed in between our code. So body is basically the everything. And again, I wanna change the background color, so I'll type in background color. And let me do yellow. It might be a little bit stark in the eyes. Let's see. Ooh, cool. Um, not sure this is the best color combo, but it, it does the job for now. Um, another thing we can do is do borders. And so, let's say I wanna make a border on my first heading. You can go to border. And then you'll want to write what size you want the border to be. So you can throw in any random number. I'll do three pixels. And you also want to write what design you want the border to be. So I'll do solid, um, but there's like a lot of other ones. And let's say I want pink. There you have it. I did a lot there. Let's talk about what I just did. The first thing is you want to write how big you want your border to be like. So if you want to change the size of your border, you can just change this number. So let me just type in 30 versus three so you can see the difference. There you go. And then the second word is what design you want your border to be. I did solid, but you could do dotted, dashed, double, groove, ridge. There's lots of options. Is it expected that I memorize all these things about coding? So I love Googling and no, you do not have to have everything memorized. So. Let's say I wanna think of other borders. Something I can do is go to google.com and type in like CSS border options. And here you go, W3Schools is great. And if you scroll down, look at all these borders you can have. Dotted, dash, solid, groove, double. Did I already say that? Dotted, dash, solid, you get it. And so let's try groove. Sounds cool, I've never done groove before, let's see. Oh, interesting. That's kind of cool. That's really cool. Um, so yes, please, please, please Google. I Google all the time. Most people will tell you like Googling is your best friend. So don't feel guilty. In fact, feel empowered to do it. Um, and the last thing going back full circle is the color. So you can change this to purple if you wanted to. Nice. Okay, I just showed you a lot about CSS. Now I want you to jazz up your own website using CSS. If you want some inspiration and to see some other CSS selectors and properties and values that you can change, you can again head to that website that we had earlier. Tara, I'm so proud of my new coding superpowers. What now? First off, I just want to say job well done. Coding your own website is a crazy, amazing feat and you should be so proud. So I do have a challenge for you. Using what you've learned today, along with anything new that you learn or Google, 
create a website about one of your heroes. I want to see your website along with the rest of the Code with Classy team. So please click on this link to start on this replet. After you're done, you'll want to submit your challenge here using this form. Again, we can't wait to see what you create.